Thanks, Eleni. Alfred Herrhausen, Gesell Shaft, EC, and all their collaborators for what is a, a very uh, productive engagement. Uh, it's a very high profile gathering, and I will particularly single out um, uh, Ricky and Philip for special thanks for making me fly thousands of miles to come and share with you the challenges of 23 million people in five minutes. <laughs> so basically, Lagos, uh, bring you greetings from Lagos. Lagos is the economic capital of Nigeria. And as the Under Secretary of State, uh, Under Secretary General said about Lagos, Lagos has uh, recorded some modest uh, successes in terms of managing the huge population we have, but that in itself has uh, made us uh, victims of that success because everybody from all parts of Nigeria in the south, south where we have, we have restiveness around the oil producing areas, to the northeast where we have the Boko Haram. So all the caravans are heading to Lagos and so therefore it um, presents us with a, a huge population explosion for which we have to continually plan and try to make sense of what we have. So I haven't painted that beautiful picture. Could we just operate it manually? Yes, um, we have in Lagos State a strategic transportation master plan which hinges on implementation of major reforms based on objectives that are essential for achieving our transport vision. Uh, the idea is to increase transport choices for all users, introduce an integrated transport system, making transit system attractive, convenient, affordable, and accessible. Reducing urban transportation induced emissions, optimizing usage of road network, integration of land use through urban planning, and securing long term finance for all the objectives. The implementation of the Lagos State's master plan is hinged on three primary uh, strategic uh, objective foci. Number one is a rail construction bus reforms and water transportation. Now, um, historically, um, Lagos is a city that developed without, um, um, especially the, the um, Lagos metropolitan area is all built up. So it means that uh, the amount of rail we can have in the city is limited to only certain parts. So that gives us a challenge in itself. And the, the, the dominant mode of transportation in Lagos is through cars and minibuses on the roads. Well, because Lagos, in terms of space, has the smallest land area of all the states in Nigeria and the highest population. So that in itself shows you the amount of uh, challenge we're confronted with. And at least two thirds of all the imports into Nigeria pass through Lagos ports. So that only goes to show you the amount of uh, pressure our uh, road infrastructure is on. So clearly we need to diversify. We need to think out of the box. I've listened to different submissions about different cities. And I am of the opinion that uh, no one size will fit all in African cities. We all, to we all have to work with the peculiarities of the different cities. But by sheer divine providence, Lagos has an abundant water body, which is about at least a third of the surface area. So where I think uh, my efforts are going to be um, primarily directed while I'm commissioner is to build capacity along the waterways. So I'll just demonstrate that for you. In five minutes, you'll have to improvise. But we have developments of a blue line. We're doing some real work. Um, we have bus, uh, bus reforms, which means that we want to de-emphasize use of uh, single occupant cars with, believe, a mass transportation uh, system, which is multimodal and integrated is the solution. 
Just to show you the irony of uh, the city called Lagos, look at this. This is typical traffic life in Lagos. You see all the cars, bumper to bumper, and you see the waterway is virtually empty. So it's a no-brainer, really. So what we need to do is take a lot of that pressure of, those, of that road and put them on the waterways for both passengers and for cargo, especially for cargo. So that picture just you know, tells you exactly where we are, the, by <coughs> divine providence, what's available, and then we also have to decide that we have to find the political will and the resources to invest in water transportation to take that pressure off. So we, we, are, we, are, we are developing infrastructure on the waterways. We're building terminals. Uh, we have about 30 jetties and, um, and at different stages of construction. But uh, we also have a challenge of uh, Nigerians and I believe possibly Africans not being very friendly with water transportation. So, so we believe that a lot of advocacy needs to be done around that. Uh, that's a sociological experiment we have to do. Philip is asking me to stop, so I want to thank you for listening.